So uh, in the last class we had completed till here, this question was left to be discussed. See, here the time is given as under root x plus 3, right? So if the time is given as x plus 3, now we have to find out the speed. And for finding out the speed, we will square it. So t square is equal to x plus 3 right now. Now we require the equation of the distance so as to find out the speed. Without finding out the distance, we won't be able to calculate the speed. So from here, we'll just calculate x is equal to t square minus 3. So t square minus 3 is calculated. Now you calculate the velocity. You differentiate distance over time. So this becomes 2t. Now see, 3 is again a constant for us. So x to the power n, when we write it as nx to the power n minus 1, this becomes simply 2t. Again, we have to find out the time when the body stops. So body will stop. So velocity, our final velocity will become 0. Now see, 2t will become 0. Ultimately, time will also become 0. So at 0 second, the body will stop. Now, uh, we'll come to the velocity portion. Uh, but first, write down this. Then I'll discuss it. Now, look, in the second part, when we are calculating, when we were considering only the distance, we had the entire concept of speed with us. Now, when we are considering only displacement, that will give us the velocity. So, basically, whatever you studied yesterday, it's a continuation of that only. So, the rate of change of distance, this gave us the speed, and the rate of change of displacement would give us the velocity. So you have the definition again. So how will you relate it? How will you relate this in terms of scalars and the vectors which we have discussed? This is a scalar and this will be our vector. Now, when you are having the rate of change of displacement, P is equal to S by T, the formula will remain the same in both the cases which you studied yesterday and the cases which we're studying right now. Both of these have the same form. It's just that this is just an extension of the displacement portion which you've studied. And in the last class, this was the extent that it was the extension of the scalar portion of the distance which you've studied. Uh, other students also, please I'll not repeat it. Only Alina has obeyed the instructions. This is this instruction is for everybody, not just for Alina. Adil, you are also present. Ali, you are there. No, Phil, you're there. Ali and Adil, please, it's uh, this uh, in the classes, you automatically have to open up the page. Now, the types of velocity when we are discussing. So you have uniform cases and you have the non-uniform cases. Now, uniform and non-uniform, this is not a new thing for you. Yesterday also, we have studied the definitions of uniform and non-uniform. Both are the same. When we say uniform, means equal amount of displacements are covered in the equal intervals of time. And since here we are talking about velocity, which itself is a vector quantity. So you have the magnitude of the quantity, you have the direction of the quantity. Both of these won't change in uniform. 
fine both of these would not change if either of these quantities is changing we will get a non uniform case fine so i'll just give you an example here circular motion you have not studied this is uh, in your rotational motion part that is your chapter 7 we'll be discussing it in detail but right now you just have to focus on if the body is moving on a circular track velocity at every point changes how magnitude remains the same but since we are considering a tangent over the circle we get different directions of tangent so all together we get a new direction at every point that's why this gives a very good example even if you're having this magnitude remaining constant all over you will get a different direction at every point you will be considering and similarly likewise yesterday non uniform is further classified into average and instantaneous same thing so for but this time the formula for average this will become total displacement yesterday we were having total distance right but see we have seen in our very first class that there is a difference between calculation of the displacement and the distances so here also the total displacement would be calculated and then you will divide it by the total time all right uh, write it down all of you from here from this note point and any doubts please let me know please adjust your cameras alina and ali mohammed
uh, look, this is a very short example uh, for finding out the average velocity. So you have the total displacement. Now, how will you calculate the total displacement? You will just check the first point, which is your initial point. So if your initial point, let's say the initial point is A, the person is moving and going to point D. No, actually the first person, uh, he is going to point D, then he is going to point B, and then he is going to point C. And coming back to point A, so let's say this is our final position. Fine. This much is, let's say, this is 5 centimeters. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Just wait, Alina. Wait, wait. Man, scroll down. So uh, wait class, do not write down right now. Listen. So the person, let's say, let's remove D. Let's make this as the final point. Let's say D is the final point. Now, when we have to calculate the average velocity, the average velocity here, this would be the total displacement. Now, when you are calculating the displacement, you are joining the initial and the final position. Right? This is the initial and this is the final point. So this initial and this is the final. Now, look, if this is 5, this is 3, this becomes 2. And this is already 10 meters, right? So we have our final distance as 10 meters. We'll not be adding this 10, we'll not be adding this five, we'll not be adding this three, we'll be just writing this as 10 meters, this is our displacement. So when you are asked to calculate the average velocity, we'll be having 10 divided by the total time, total time is just two seconds. So this becomes five meter per second. Similar question, similar pattern is just that you have the displacement in terms of distance. Write it quickly. One more question I'll show you.
Yes, yes, right, right. So what's the answer? Okay. And second? Look, class, this is saying a man walks from home to market, fine, home to market. Firstly, he is moving with a speed of five kilometers per hour. And this separation is, this distance is five kilometers. And on seeing the market close, he returns. Okay, Ali. On seeing the market close, he returns and sees that this uh, velocity is 7. Point. He increases his velocity and makes it to 7.5 km. Now, class, one thing. From 0 to 30 minutes, 0 to 40 minutes, there's a third part also, 0 to 50 minutes and so on. How do you have to calculate this? See, when you are having a person moving from home to market, let us at least first find out what is the distance that the person is covering. When he is going from home to market, what is the time duration? Right? So see, if this is the distance and when he's going from home to market, the speed is 5. So distance is 2.5, speed is 5. Let us see. See, time taken from home to market. This is 2.5 by 5, which is equal to half an hour, or we can write it as 30 minutes. So it is very clear that this is 0 to 30 minutes here. The person has started moving from 0 and has stopped at 30 minutes when he reached the market. So this is our initial point. This is our final point. Initial and final point. Now look class. In the, these cases where initial and final points are same, we have the distance is equal to the displacement. So when you are calculating the average velocity, this is 2.5 kilometers by 0 0.5 of an hour, which becomes 5 kilometer per hour. And this is the distance also. This is the displacement. So this is our average speed also. And this only is the answer of average velocity because here your distance and displacement both are same class. This is motion in a straight line. Fine. Now, secondly, 0 to 40 minutes. This is a little trick here which you have to understand carefully. Listen carefully, class. We do not know at 40 minutes what is happening. We just know that 0 to 30 minutes is this when the person is moving with 5 km per hour, per hour. Now, class, let us see when the person is moving back from market to home with a speed of 7.5 km per hour. Then what is the time? right market to home because now the speed is, is speed is different so it won't be 30 minutes exactly when he's going from market to home so what would be the time distance is still the same 2.5 kilometers right and what is the speed 7.5 kilometer this becomes 1 by 3 of an hour when you multiply 1 by 3 to 60 you get 20 minutes so it means from home to market, it took him 30 minutes. And then from market to home back, it took him just 20 minutes. Now look, class, let us elaborate this 20, these 20 minutes. This was home. This is the market. If total distance is 2.5 kilometer, This will be 1.25 kilometer, half of it, right at the midpoint. 
and from the midpoint to the home, this will also be 1.25 kilometer, right? This is the midpoint. Do you agree till here, all of you? Yes. Others also? Till here it's clear or not? Alina, is it clear? Aline, are you understanding? Yes, yes, okay. Now look, we have the total duration for this time as 20 minutes. So class, if you divide this, 10 minutes here and 10 minutes here. That justifies this 20 minutes, right? These 20 minutes are being justified now. Now look class, zero, to 30 minutes here means half an hour here, 30 minutes here. And when he is returning back at the midpoint here, at this midpoint, this is the 10 minutes. So 30 minutes here plus 10 minutes. It's the 40 minutes. So from zero to 40 minutes means from home to market first, then market to midpoint. Because at 0 to 50 minutes, that is this, the person is back at home. But here we require this 40 because it was mentioned in the question. Right. So now you have to calculate the average speed. Now average speed and average distances will now be different. See, when you are calculating the average speed, you are calculating the distance. What will be the distance? Distance will be initially 2.5 kilometer that the person is taking from home to market plus this additional 1.25 kilometers, right? And the time would be uh, 40 minutes. 40 minutes is two by three of an hour. So this becomes 3.75 by two by three, which is equal to 5.12. Please check the calculations again while writing these can have error. And when you are calculating the average velocity, look class, here when you are calculating the average velocity, you will just take the displacement. Initial position was home, final position is this midpoint. So just this is the displacement. So here this is just 1.25 divided by 2 by 3. This becomes 1.25 into 3 by 2. So this becomes 1.85, 87 kilometer per hour. Here the answers are different because distances are not equal to the displacements. Write down this question class.
see uh, we have the distance as 3t square plus 2t minus 1. So when we have to calculate the instantaneous velocity, similarly, we will be differentiating it. See, 3 into 2t to the power 2 minus 1 plus 2 t to the power 1 minus 1 minus 0. This is not just weight class. So this is 1 minus 1. So final equation will become 6t plus 2. So at t is equal to 1 second, v is equal to 6 plus 1 plus 2, which is equal to 8 meter per second. Write this.
velocity velocity of body and this is given as v is equal to 2 t minus 1 this is equal to 2t minus 1 now we have to calculate the displacement covered in 0 to 2 seconds c dv is equal to dx over dt right so if you have to calculate dx that is the displacement is missing so you will integrate it see both of these are inverse operations of each other fine both of these are inverse operations of each other it means if you are differentiating one quantity you will have to integrate the other one all right if you are differentiating it this is like your multiplication if you have 2 multiplied to 3 is just giving you 6 and if you write 6 divided by 3 it will give back 2 okay so if we are differentiating dx it is giving us velocity when you are integrating it it is giving you back displacement so here also we'll integrate on both the sides to find out the velocity time is 0 to 2 seconds put the value of velocity this is 2t minus 1 2t minus 1 dt integrating it from 0 to 2 so multiply this dt first this will be 2t dt minus dt from 0 to 2 from 0 to 2 this is 2t square by 2 from 0 to 2 this is just t from 0 to 2 so this is 2 square minus 0 square minus this is 2 minus 0 so this is 4 minus 2 which is equal to 2 meter meters this is the displacement write it class
done. Just text me done once completed till here. Ali completed. Yes, ma'am. See, rate of change of velocity when you differentiate velocity. Or more than differentiation, you should understand when some distance is being changed with respect to time, we said it was speed or velocity. Now, when this velocity is changing with respect to time, suppose this is 5 meter per second, time is 2 seconds. So, our acceleration is basically change in velocity by change in time. That is final velocity minus initial velocity by final time. Let's make it final. It's better. By final time minus initial time. So acceleration is basically rate of change of velocity. You can use this formula. You can use simply velocity, velocity divided by time. This is acceleration. Now, when to use this, when to use this, this I'll tell you. Again, you have the two types of acceleration, uniform and non-uniform. If velocity is changing in regular intervals of time, that makes it uniform. Again, non-uniform is of two types, average and instantaneous. So it's a vector quantity. SI unit is meter per second square. And CGS unit is centimeter per second square. Because see, meter per second was already there till time. One more second is being divided. Like this is one very basic question. We have to calculate acceleration. Change in velocity by change in time. Final velocity minus initial velocity divided by final time minus initial time. So 5 minus 2 is 3 divided by 10. This is 0 0.3 meter per second squared. All right. And see, uniform and non-uniform acceleration, this is also easy for you now to understand. This is just repetition. It's just that velocity has been introduced now. See, if I look at the first acceleration, this is 2 by 4. Second acceleration, this is also 2 by 4. Third acceleration, this is 2 by this is 2 by 4. So 2 by 4, 2 by 4, that is 0 0.5 meter per second square. This is the fixed acceleration. So we call this as the constant acceleration. And in case of non-uniform, you will see changing. See A1, this is 2 by 4. A2, this is 3 by 4. A3, this is 3 by 8. Continuously, the acceleration is changing. So we call this as the variable acceleration. All right, same things what you have studied. It's just that this is now acceleration instead of your velocity. Okay, uh, write it from here.
just text me done once completed class. All right, you can leave if you've completed. Uh, I'll discuss now it in the next class. Acceleration, one question we have to do, then we'll come to uniformly accelerated motions. All right.